Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to talk about the difference between absolute referencing and relative referencing. So on the screen, I've got an example which I'm going to use to show you the difference. If I just delete these totals off here. Now if I use the, the autosum function to add up this list, let's just do that. It comes up with B3 to B10, check it at the top, click the tick. Now, when I pull that across, it's automatically going to assume that I want to do column C and then column D and all the way across. If I go all the way across, it automatically does that. So these, these are relative references. They're just moving across as you move your cursor across to fill it over. Now, what's absolute referencing about? Now, watch this. If I want to know what... 319 is as a percentage of 4782 this is a formula that you could use so equals click on this cell b11 divide by n11 now i'm just going to tick this formula for a second i get an answer less than one now in excel what you can do is just click on the percent button which does the times 100 for you and then a rule is that you have two decimal places so 6.67 percent is correct for that but what happens when I pull this across it is still going to do the relative referencing so now I've got an error message coming up on the screen if I click on the first div 0 it says C11 divided by O11 so C11 is correct that is the total for February but O11 so it's moved basically across to this cell and the next one has moved across to that cell so if I come back across, I'll just bring this down a little bit so you can see that. So that is moving across. So as I pull this over, it's going into blank cells, which is just going across like that. So it's maintaining a relative reference. Now, to make that absolute, now absolute is a technical term, but I like to say we're going to lock the cell. And the cell we're going to lock is the N11 cell. So when I pull this across, I don't want this N11 to move over. I want it to stay there, the reference to stay there. That's an absolute reference. To do it, I've gone back onto the first cell, which has got the correct answer. Up on the formula bar, I'm clicking next to the N11, anywhere in it, and I'm going to press the F4 key. Now, the F4 key is the shortcut key to put dollar signs around a cell reference. Now, I am going across the screen, column to column to column, so I actually only need a dollar sign on the N, but I say to my classes quite often, if in doubt, just put them both on. But if I press F4 again, it'll take one off, then the other one comes back on. So that actually, the dollar sign N is the only one I need. And if I press it again, it takes them both off. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to leave them both on. If I click that tick, now what will happen, when I pull that across, everything works fine. So if I just do that again, all at once, this time coming down, so I want to know what 1,025 is as a percentage of that. I type the formula equals that, divided by the total, click the tick, do the percentage, do the decimal places, and then do the dollar sign, F4, because I'm going to pull that one down. So if I tick that again, and I can just pull that one down in line with the total, so I get the 100%. So that is an absolute reference. Now, if I come on to example two, just do another one. This is a VAT example. So I want in this cell, what is the VAT on that? And there's the VAT amount. So if I do the formula, equals D2 times by B10. Just tick that for a minute. 48 pence is correct. And if I go and pull that down, it gives me not an error message, not a div zero, but just a blank pound. Because if I click on this second one, that's looking at B11, so it's looking at that cell and, and the down like that, so I've just colored those in. So that's looking at B12, B13, etc., etc. What I need to do is make that, this formula absolute, this cell reference absolute. So click there, press F4, click the tick, 48 pence, and then just double click that down and it will fill it down correctly. So it's a very, very common thing, a cell reference being absolute. Now this example, if I do another one, so let's look at this. This is a car park in Edinburgh. So on Monday you, you charge £3 to park. A thousand people did park, so this needs to say a thousand. So equals that 
times that tick. So this is just a relative reference. It's on the same row. I'm just going to double click this down and it fills it down. No dollar sign needed in that example. But in this next example, I now want to know what that £3,000 is as a percentage of this total at the bottom equals J3 divided by J10. I'm going to pull that down so I need to lock or make absolute that J10. F4 the J10. Tick. Make it into a percent. Decimal places. Double click it down. Like so. So that's made that part of that formula is absolute. And the final example is I've got some sales figures. What I want is a running total to grow as I add extra figures. So to do this one, I'm clicking on auto sum, it's just going to grab B2. But if I go up to the formula bar and do a colon and type B2 again, but this time I'm going to lock the first B2, I'm going to dollar sign it, F4. Again, I don't really need to put them both on, but I am going to do tick that. So that says 23,000 because it's just looking at that. But when I pull that down, it's now saying 102,000 because that still says B2, but that one's moving. So that's an absolute reference. That's a relative reference. And if I pull it down again, it will say B2 to B4. So it's picking up the range. Now, if I highlight these three, so that says 12533. And down here it says 125335, that's correct. So it's doing it correctly. And then I can pull that all the way down to the bottom if I want. It gives me that. So probably not going to do that. I don't really want to do it like that. So if I just delete that. And then as you add extra figures and come down in the months, you can pull that formula down. It gives you the running total, however you want it. So I'll just pull that one down. Like so. If I highlight all of these just to check it is doing that. So 459, 459. So it does work. So this example, you've got an absolute cell reference and a relative cell reference. And it's a relative cell reference that keeps moving. Where the absolute one is locked. And then this list gets bigger and bigger as you pull it down. So hopefully that's of use to you, that little video on absolute and relative referencing in Excel. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you in the next one.